Now, for more on the possible strike against Syria, I'm joined by Gregory Koblenz, a chemical weapons expert and security fellow at the Council on Foreign Relations. Gregory, thanks for joining us. I just want to talk about uh, what these inspectors have been doing in Syria. It seems that they had very narrow terms of reference, or mandate, if I could call it that. They were asked simply to ascertain that a chemical weapons attack had taken place, not to apportion blame. Why was that? The, uh, the mandate was really a uh, compromise based on negotiations between uh, the UN Secretary General's office uh, and members of the UN Security Council, including Russia, uh, as well as Syria. And so the, uh, the minimum, uh, the maximum mandate that the Syrians would agree to was one where only uh, whether or not chemicals were used would be addressed, not, uh, not assigning responsibility for who actually conducted any attack if it's discovered to be one. Now, what can, what are the possibilities that the inspectors can come up with? Would they be able to tell us, for instance, the source of these chemicals, uh, the delivery systems that were used, um, stuff like that? Uh, yeah, they'll be able to find uh, evidence of uh, what kind of weapons were used to uh, disperse the chemical, uh, and that would give a sense of, of where they, they came from. If they're rockets of a certain range, you'll know that they had to come from a certain uh, location. Um, and they'll be able to find uh, uh, evidence about the, the, the sheer magnitude of, of the attack in terms of how many locations were attacked, how many different uh, attacks there were, and that would also provide an ind indicator of uh, perhaps responsibility uh, if it's such a large scale hard to believe that the, the rebels were able to pull off such a, a massive attack even on their own people. Well, that's a great point because one of the things we've been hearing from the United States, and we've heard it more than once, is that the Syrian government is the only entity that has chemical weapons and the means to deliver those chemical weapons. Do you believe that to be the case? I do. The U.S. government, uh, and, and as well as our allies in the region, have been tracking the Syrian chemical arsenal very closely for fear that the Syrians would use it, uh, weapons would get lost or stolen by uh, other groups within the country. So, uh, it, uh, and these, these are weapons that typically are very well guarded and well defended. Uh, so this is something that the Syrian government will keep a very tight control right. over. It is a substantial stockpile, isn't it? It is. Uh, the Syrians have the largest uh, chemical weapons stockpile in the Middle East, uh, estimated to be thousands of different chemical uh, weapons, um, several hundred metric tons maybe of, of agents altogether. So very large stockpile. Where did Syria get these chemical weapons from? Well, the Syrians have been building chemical weapons for about 20 years uh, now, and they have several production facilities, and they rely on imported chemicals, uh, so-called dual-use chemicals, that could be used for commercial purposes, or they could be used to produce chemical weapons, and they uh, acquire these chemicals from a variety of sources. Now, if the Syrians, uh, they've been building their own bombs, or rather chemical weapons, uh, as it would turn out. Now, uh, are there any international treaties, any kind of laws internationally that govern what chemicals are used for? As you said, they import certain kinds of chemicals. How they use it? Um, can they build weapons? Is there any kind of supervision? Uh, yeah, most countries in the world have signed on to the Chemical Weapons Convention. Um, 189 countries have ratified it, which is about 98% of the world's population. And this says you will not develop, produce, acquire, or use chemical weapons. So this is as close to a universal treaty as you can find. And it, uh, it does regulate uh, some of the chemicals that can be traded. In addition, there's a group called the Australia Group, which is a group of uh, mostly uh, European, North American, uh, and other industrialized countries that coordinate their export controls to make sure that chemicals that they are uh, transferring or selling for commercial purposes don't get misused for a weapons program. You know, one of the things the United States says right now, well, President Obama said this today, is that uh, any attack is not time sensitive. Um, but these weapons can be moved. They can move to other places, can't they? Chemical weapons are uh, portable. Um, they can be transferred, so uh, this does give the regime extra time to hide them. But that's actually not too much of a liability because uh, I don't think the U.S. has a good capability to actually destroy these weapons if they're located. There's always a risk that you will release contamination and cause collateral damage. And so I, I think the U.S. would be very reluctant to strike these weapons directly in any case. So I, I don't think that's going to be as much of a factor in, in their military planning. Greg Koblenz, thanks for joining us. Thank you.